The second method for uh, synchronous or coherent demodulator uh, of, or, or demodulation of double side band surface carrier is called costless loop. And costless loop has an advantage over the squaring method that, as we will see, it merges everything in the same circuit. So it merges the phase loop loop, the squaring, and even the demodulation in the same circuit. So basically, this is how that circuit or costless loop looks like. So you receive on the antenna, you receive your uh, double side band signal, which is M of T, cosine omega CT plus, let's assume the phase that you receive it is theta I. This is the phase that we don't know yet. Uh, you receive it at the, uh, at the receiver at the antenna, and then you divide this signal into two branches. At the same time, you have a VCO here. This VCO, voltage on the world oscillator, is going to give you a signal, which is, uh, let's say, uh, 2 cosine omega CT plus theta naught. And then we are going to shift it by negative pi over 2 to get, to get, if you shift it by negative pi over 2, you will get 2 sine omega CT plus theta naught. And then you multiply it here one time, one time, you multiply it, you multiply the receipt signal times this signal one time, and you multiply the receipt signal times this signal another time. When we multiply, and then we pass through a low pass filter, and here also we pass through a low pass filter, what we are going to get is multiplying cosine times two cosine. So again, you have to sign the sum, which is a high frequency component because the sum is 2 omega c. It will not pass through the Lopez filter. And half to sign the difference. Half to sign the difference will be half will cancel with the two, and to sign the difference is to sign the error between the two phases. So what you are going to get here, you are going to get m of t multiplied by to sign the difference, which is to sign the difference between the uh, two phases, to sign theta error. Say the error between the two phases. The second branch will be multiply the receipt signal times two sine, cosine times two sine will give you half sine the sum, half sine the difference. Half sine the sum is a high frequency component, two omega c, it will not pass through the Lopez filter. Half sine the difference, half will cancel with the two, and sine the difference will give you sine the error between the two phases. So what you are going to get here. You are going to get m of t times sine theta error. And then, and then we are going to multiply these two signals together. So we multiply these two signals together, we get what? We get m squared sine cosine, sine theta e cosine theta e, which can be written as half sine 2 theta e. Now, before we continue, look at what we did so far. Here, this part, we have this row multiplied by a filter. This reminds you of something. The phase loop loop, the phase loop loop is a VCO multiplied by a filter. Here, we have also VCO multiplied by a filter. So, this is another phase loop loop. And then here we are multiplying this signal and this signal, and we get the square. This reminds you of something? It reminds you of the squaring in the squaring method. Squaring in the squaring method. So, so far, we have phase loop loop and squaring in the same circuit. That's why I told you that costless loop, it merges. Huh? Three things merge. The phase loop loop merges the squaring, and also we'll see that it merges the demodulation. M squared here, again, M squared of T over 2. This is a non zero average signal. So we can write it as constant plus some other signal phi of T, where the constant is the DC component. And phi of T is the remaining of this signal with zero DC signal, right? So we can plot it. Be careful that this is now this is a low pass signal. This is a baseband signal, right? This is a baseband signal, which appears like this. K appears as a delta. 
course, so you want to write uh, uh, L squared over 2 times sine 2 theta. So let's do that. If we multiply this, uh, if we multiply L squared of t over 2 sine 2 theta e, this will result in k sine 2 theta e. And 2 theta e here, for a given instant of time, it's constant. There is an error, a certain error. So it's going to give you constant multiplied by k plus 5 t multiplied by sine 2 theta e. Okay, this appears as what? Well. This is a constant dc that appears here at the zero, and then uh, maybe it's multiplied by uh, 2 pi, uh, because uh, if you are working with omega, it will be 2 pi, and then phi multiplied by something, it will appear as a zero dc signal, which will appear up to here, 4 pi d minus 4 pi. Now, in order to separate the signal in the middle, which is proportional with sine 2 theta e, you need a narrow band. You need a narrow band. Band pass filter or low pass filter? It's a low pass filter because these signals, they exist in the base band. We don't have omega c here, we don't have omega c. It's a base band signal. All of this is true, it's a base band signal. It has a component, which is the DC component that appears at the zero which we can separate using a narrow band band as filter. So use here a narrow band, narrow band, low pass filter. What we are going to get here, what we are going to get is, we are going to get only constant multiplied by sine to theta e. So we are, going, we are going to get an error signal here that is proportional constant multiplied by sine 2 theta e proportional to the error between the two phases and this error signal is going to modify the DCO either by uh, speeding up the DCO to catch the base if theta i is greater than theta node then your, this signal, this error signal will be positive it's going to increase the speed of DCO until the two phases catch or lock when the two phases lock with each other if theta i is less than theta node the error signal here is going to be negative, which will tell the DCO to slow down or reduce the speed until the two phases again lock together. And once the two phases lock together, once the two phases, the two angles inside the received signal, uh, the two angles, once the two angles inside the received signal and the one that is generated by the DCO, the two phases lock together, what will happen is that theta error is going to be zero. And if theta error is zero, look at the signal, m of t cosine theta error. m of t cosine theta error will be what? If theta error is zero, huh? then m of t cosine theta error will be equal to m of t. So basically, once the phase of loop works and the two phases Lock together, which means that they are equal to each other. Theta error will be zero, and this segment m of t cosine theta e will be equal to m of t. Which means that once the two phases they lock together, the signal here at this place exactly it will be m of t, which is what we want at the output of the demodulator. So actually, cause this loop it works also as a demodulator, and it gives you at the output it gives you m of t. Okay, once the two phases they lock together. And once, by the way, once the two phases they lock together, they keep locked. That's why we call it locking. Once they lock together, if anyone changes, the other one will change with it. It will keep track of it. That's why we call it, we, we call it phase locked loop. They lock together. Okay? So even if this theta i changes suddenly, theta mode is going to catch it immediately within few microseconds, few nanoseconds, and always once they lock once you turn on your radio it takes few microseconds in the beginning to lock and then they keep locked in the in the first few microseconds there will be an error here you will not receive m of t you will receive m of t multiplied by something but once they lock together what will happen is that theta error will be zero and you will receive m of t and like this costless loop works as phase loop squaring 
and demodulator at the same time. I hope that was clear and uh, keep in mind that these two methods that we uh, explained, they are used only for double side band suppressed carrier. There are other circuits that are used for single side band and vestigial side band, but we cannot use these, uh, these two methods for single side band or vestigial side band. See you in the next video.